So it's the saddest day of the year here today. Today's the day the boat comes out of the water. Yeah, I know some people may not view that as sad, but if you're a boater, you feel my pain. It's 2nd of October, weather's starting to get a little cooler. It's still some nice stuff left in the forecast, but unfortunately my work schedule's got me working every weekend up until the marina closes on the 1st of November. Uh, there's some other scheduling issues that uh, are in the way right now trying to get the boat out with the usage of a truck to tow the trailer and things like that. So a uh, quick last minute decision earlier this week to say, okay, let's it, boating's over, let's pull it out. Um, before we get to that, a couple of people posted on Facebook uh, back in July when we were in the uh, Thousand Islands in Brockville that uh, they'd like a look around the boat. So before we uh, get started up and get out of here, let's take a quick look around. So the boat's 2005 Monterey 302, 32 feet. The two is because you get the added two foot from the extended swim platform. Nice barbecue mounted right to the swim platform. Step inside. The full canvas top is up right now just because it's I just opened up and got here. And it is only 15 degrees today. Nice big bench seat across the back for three. You can put five people at the table quite comfortably to have something to eat. Two people on this side. Uh, engine bay is down below. I'm not going to open that up right now. It's uh, a little grimy in there because it is the end of the season. The boat is powered by two 320 horsepower Volvo Penta 5.7 GXI fuel injected engines pushing a pair of dual prop out drives. Uh, this boat will run 50 miles an hour, no problem whatsoever. Uh, runs very comfortably at 40 miles an hour. Runs even better on fuel economy at about 32 miles an hour. So that's what, kind of where we keep it normally. Uh, double white helm station for the most part. Flip up bolster for when you need to stand to see what you're doing a little better. At six foot four, I really don't have that issue. Uh, basic uh, Raymarine VHF radio. Uh, the boat doesn't have AIS or radar or anything like that. I wish it did. Uh, that'll be the next boat. We've got Bennett trim tabs. They're quite handy when you get some people in it. Uh, there's no electronics as per se from the manufacturer. So I have uh, got a 9 inch Samsung tablet running Navionics. Does everything I need it to do. A very, very super powerful program. It's like 30 bucks a year for the subscription. They update it almost monthly. Uh, and that gives me all of North America uh, and the Bahamas. Standard package of gauges. Uh, the fuel gauge doesn't have power on it. That's why it's reading uh, that far below empty. The boat's got a little over half tank right now. Tack sink meter. Sink the two engines together uh, for better uh, performance handling. A pair of trim gauges for each drive. And then the gauges are broke down for uh, port and starboard. Voltage, oil, temperature, depth sounder in the center and uh, temperature oil voltage for the starboard engine on the other side. Array of rocker switches for the panel lights, nav, windshield wipers, horn, and the uh, engine start stop switches. Blower, kind of hard to see way down there, but we've got the courtesy lights for the cockpit which are on and the engine room lights. Remote spotlight control for up top and the uh, Kenwood uh, stereo controller. Old fashioned uh, cigarette lighter 12 volt adapter with a uh, USB converter plugged into it. I'm probably going to take that out over the winter and upgrade that to a regular USB port. And that's just an access panel to get down behind the dash. And on the far corner, that's our windlass control for those people who uh, are not boaters. That uh, runs the anchor winch up and down on the front of the boat. So step down inside through the companionway door. Quickly to our left is the uh, aft cabin. Uh, they call this a cabin. It is a queen size bed. We've tried to sleep back here once. Unfortunately, it is very claustrophobic if you uh, don't like tight spaces. It also, the floor isn't level. So if you're not careful, you will roll backwards. And right underneath the mirror there, uh, say hi, hi Dave. Uh, underneath the mirror is the, or sorry, behind the mirror is the cockpit refrigerator. So every time it starts, it's right above your head for whoever the poor sap is at the back and it keeps you up. So we tend not to sleep back here. We kind of use this more, as you can tell, as a garage. Uh, there's the dinghy, uh, extra life jackets, cushions, sun pad, flippers for when the water is warm, and the uh, life ring just stored back here when we're not underway, and all that good stuff. On the very back corner back there, there is a removable panel that accesses uh, the uh, sewage system for the boat, shall we say. Uh, it's a stinky place I've yet to have to go into, and I really hope I don't have to anytime soon. Coming out of the aft cabin, we've got a dinette. Uh, it's a little tight. It looks like it would hold four people. Eh, two people can sit here just barely. 
The TV's been removed from the old-fashioned place. This boat did originally come equipped with a 9-inch TV DVD combo. We had the DVD, not the VCR. Uh, the previous owner, he took that out and put a 24-inch flat panel here on the wall. Uh, behind the wall, I've added a couple little covers in because it was just an open hole. Uh, there's a USB port back there on each side, one to run the uh, Amazon Fire Stick. And the other one, kind of hard to see back in there. That little box is my travel router, as they call them. That gives me a local hotspot on the boat. I can just connect it to uh, public Wi-Fi at a marina, at a city, and then all my devices connect through that, giving me a nice hardware firewall. And I don't have to worry about hackers and changing Wi-Fi passwords everywhere we go. So behind the glass panel, there's our 2005 Kenwood audio deck. You know what, it still works really well. It has a Sirius module uh, in it. I've never bothered to activate it. I'm not a big fan of Sirius. I'd either listen to the local radio or I'll uh, stream something from Amazon Music on my phone. Power panel up top. There's a second tablet mount up there for the uh, other tablet we use for uh, uh, live TV. You wanna stream like the news in the morning, pull the weather up there, uh, leave a radar map. We can also run the Navionics on the second tablet. So if somebody's down here, you can look up where you are or for at night when you're on anchor, you can run your anchor alarm or have the chart up to make sure you're not going anywhere. Behind that, we got our two power panels, 12 volt DC on this side, everything from cabin lights, the radio water pumps, all that stuff, engine ignition controls, generator controls. The boat does have a 5.7 kilowatt Kohler generator on board. Uh, that'll run air conditioning, all that good stuff. 120 volt panel with our shore power and our stove uh, refrigerator for down here in the cabin, which is actually 120 and 12 volts. Water heater, battery charger, microwave, coffee maker, the TV, the ice maker we don't have. I don't believe it's actually connected to anything. I've gone looking for those lines, never found them. Uh, yes, the boat, like I said, does have air conditioning and I didn't think I would need it when we were buying a boat. Uh, I'll never have another boat again without air conditioning because not only does it give us air, it gives us heat. The uh, dinette here does drop down these two hooks. You can put two plates in. There's a filler cushion. Uh, they do say the boat sleeps six. Uh, those would be very tiny people you're sleeping on that at that spot. Uh, good spot for little the kids. Everything is removable with storage. This is kind of tool storage and stuff. Cleaning supplies, things like that under that one. The other one is uh, pots, pans, cooking utensils, all that other stuff. And there are some underneath the forward berth. They're just too hard to get at when the bed is made up like this. This is a dinette as well. There's the hole in the floor for the post. And there's a table. We leave it down. It's normally just two of us. So this is what we've uh, converted into our sleeping area. It's about six foot five end to end and it's widest spot. So I just barely fit. I mean, you do, you do what you do, right? Two more speakers up front for the stereo. Our flamingo gift from our youngest daughter. This is where the old nine inch TV used to sit. Um, since then I've added uh, another USB power point in there and it probably won't zoom in very well. There is a voltage gauge on there for the battery voltage. Storage place up there for electronics, binoculars, all that good stuff. So we come to the, uh, the galley. We do have a fairly nice, fairly nice sink, nice and deep, hot and cold running water. Uh, 120 volt outlet up top, microwave. Uh, the coffee maker used to go there, the old Mr. Coffee uh, 12 cup percolator. We The previous owner took it out. Uh, we use it, we plug the toaster in, things like that up there. Uh, dry storage in behind. Nice two burner stove. No boats, not complete until it's got a nice bottle of Crown Royal on board. Uh, fridge, yeah, it's just, I can show you that. Uh, it just has some Gatorade and stuff in it. The uh, season's basically over for the most part. The boat's been emptied out. So we've just got a few things left on board to keep it, uh, keep the fridge running and not working too hard. Underneath the uh, sink, got a storage cabinet, cleaning supplies, things like that, and three drawers for cutlery and, uh, you know, the other odds and sods. Also, no boat is complete without big plastic clips for clipping towels, canvas, anything you've got to keep out of the way and under control in the wind. We've got a pretty decent uh, bathroom or head, as they're called in the marine world on board. Vacuum flush toilet. It's all plastic enclosed because the uh, water head 
does pull up and that becomes your shower. We showered all summer on the boat as the marina was closed because of, uh, or the showers at the marina were closed this year, I should say, because of COVID. So we showered on board, oh, 30 or 40 times at least, the two of us, with no problem whatsoever. It's a little messy to clean up because you do get water everywhere, but it's all plastic. You take the squeegee and down it comes. When you close the companionway door, gives you two steps up and the windshield swings open and you can access out on the bow to run lines. There is a uh, sun pad that snaps in between the two chrome handrails there. Uh, it's a little wet and gross right now, so I'm not going to go up there. So that was a quick tour of the who and what. Um, like I said, season's over today. Hopefully uh, we get back in the water right early, early May. It's a little dark there. Let me bring this over here. There we go. Now we can see what we're looking at. Uh, like I said, boat comes back in. Marine opens May 1st. Hopefully we'll be in the water uh, the weekend. I've already looked at the calendar and May 1st is a Saturday this year. So Saturday, Sunday, maybe we'd boat right back in the water. That'd be great. Uh, until then, well, not sure what we're going to do. Maybe a little motorcycle riding still. Still some nice weather left for that. And uh, yeah, well, enjoy the video of the boat coming out of the water. Well, so I'm not going to enjoy it, but you know, enjoy the watch. I had a camera set up on the bow, but unfortunately uh, it ran for a minute 32 and never recorded much of the haul out, which was uh, rather disappointing seeing uh, it was the first time I had ever powered into the trailer and uh, I hit it just about spot on. It was impressive. So of course there's no video to uh, prove that, but that's just the way it goes sometimes, I guess. I pressure washed the bottom. It didn't come up bad. I uh, need to get some cleaner, clean it, do a bottom paint. The drives really need to be cleaned up. Those are supposed to be gray, actually. I hit it with some uh, some of the cleaner I had, and you can kind of see the gray on the side of the drive there. What it's actually supposed to look like. So we'll give those a nice clean in the spring. Bring them right up to new. Wasn't bad this year for zebra mussels on it. It uh, the water must have been warmer. The zebra mussels might not like the warmer water or something. I'm not sure. Well, that uh, brings a close to the saddest day of the year video. Um, I don't know what to say at this point in time. You know, it's a fact of living in Canada. We get the uh, beautiful four seasons. As you can see behind me, maybe. You can see the color of the trees on the mountain here in town. And yes, they call it a mountain. It's a little higher. You just can't see it from here. Um, the four seasons of what makes it so nice living in Canada as far as weather goes. You know, I don't mind the minus 20 in the winter. I can handle that. I'm going to miss this though.